Okay, good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing? Good? Good. <laughs> it's last day, it's about, 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 about done, right? Great. Uh, I'm Samik Behera. I was one of the founding co developers on the Quantum project, which became the Neutron project. And we did a similar version of this stack about three years ago, saying why we need Neutron. Uh, recently, we have, been, have had Neutron. It's gone to about a, quite a few releases. And there's still the question, is it right for me? What does Neutron do for me? Or does it even work? Or when does it work? So this is my attempt kind of reiterating those first principles and seeing how much, how far have we come? Uh, do we, are, are we actually meeting those expectations? And when does it work? Who is using it? And then take some questions and hopefully get, you know, give some clarity on this topic. Great, let's get started. So if those of you remember the keynote address from uh, the first day, you know, uh, the sec our second day actually, Troy from Rackspace said, you know, we in the OpenStack community, we are the rebel alliance, right? On the left side over here. We are, it's like we're disparate groups who love to argue together, but argue to come together and then we align and we move forward. So the reason I show that, and that's the Federation's droid army. So for those of you not Star Wars fans out here, the, Federation, the Rebel Alliance fights the Federation. The Federation is stoic, a single model. Everything is you know, one cookie cutter. They're very robotic, monolithic. And here you have very disparate opinions. You have choice. You, know, you have dissent within, but you come together to fight, to fight together. So the reason I bring this is philosophically, you know, as I'm going to present, that's the Nova network, was the Nova network model, very rigid. You can do whatever, you can have any flavor up till it is my, this way. And we're gonna talk about those three flavors. You can do anything with networking up till you, you put them on a flat network. <laughs> and Neutron was very different. It's like, you can do everything you want. Uh, you can use any networking vendor you want. You can use open source technology plus net, uh, you know, some proprietary vendors and create anything you want. And that gives a lot of choice, a lot of power, addresses a way more use cases than Nova Network. You know, it could be possible in any configuration. But it also brings some challenges. How do these, all these things work together? How can I lock down, even though I have all the choice, how do I lock down to the models that actually work or which, which I have validated? So that's going to be a theme here. Of we, we, we believe that this model is more powerful at the end. In the, in the, in the short term, there might be dissent. You know, there might be arguments, which is the better way. But longer term, you have a lot more choice, and you, the good models will rise up. And uh, we're going to talk about some of those models in this talk. Right. So that's, that's a rough outline to follow. You know, NOVA Network versus Neutron, high level, what is it? What is NOVA Network? Why not NOVA Network? Or why NOVA Network? Uh, neutron. Why Neutron? Uh, how does it differ, differ from NOVA Network with the open source components? Why would I need a, uh, some kind of vendor integration? What can I do with Neutron with the, me mixing all, matching all of this that I couldn't do with NOVA Network? And finally, who is using this stuff, right? There's been a lot of kind of uh, talk in the community, oh, you know, I, don't want, I want to keep using Nova Network. I like it. I love it. I want to hug it. <laughs> I, I, I've been using it for such a long time, and I don't know how to upgrade it. Upgrades are generally challenging. So let's see who actually is using it in the field. And I'm an engineer. I think like probably most of you here. So we're going to look at some numbers, like the user data around the usage. And, and you know, I'll let you decide what you think is right for you. right? So let's talk about the Droid Army a little bit. <laughs> what, what does the Droid Army give us? The Federation's Droid Army. So how was networking done before Neutron was there? No. Nova, so in the beginning, networking was subsumed in Nova or as in the compute fabric. And that was, that was how networking has been done for a while, be it any of the virtualization platforms in the past, or be it uh, you know, when OpenStack started out, any other cloud management platforms, networking never had a first class citizen. It was subsumed in a kind of auto-provisioning, self-service environment in the compute stack, and that's what NOAA Network offered. Right? It is still there in that model, but it's, 
you know, it is integrated, but at the same time, it's very limited from scale, feature set, a lot of choice perspective, right? So it is still available, but the reason we wanted Neutron is, like I was telling you about, you can have anything uh, you want, any way of doing networking, up to these three ways. First, limited topologies, only flat. So this is, this is a single flat L2 domain. That was the first supported topology. And you see that router over there? That, used, that is actually a virtual appliance or a virtual machine. It's called Nova Network. Initially, even firewalling security groups were implemented with IP tables in that box. It was not at the hypervisor level. So all the traffic gets dragged over there. Um, you know, I don't, uh, if you know a little bit about networking, this is a single L2 domain. L2 domains have scale limits unless you, know, you fill up the switches, scam tables in a cloud, highly dense environment if you have too many VMs. And uh, in a cloud environment, you have a very it's very dynamic. VMs are not static. They come up and go down. Every time they do that, you, know, you do broadcast on the physical network. And that's what fills up the CAM tables of the switches, which means the more dense your environment is, if you use an L2-only kind of model, you have to keep on buying newer hardware and newer gear because your network's going to get stressed. So that is one way of doing it. We have ways to overcome it and talk about it, we, even with Nova Network, and, but it still leaves us with some challenges. Then there was flat DHCP. Same thing, <laughs> except we have a DHCP server on it. The reason we had a DHCP server on it is because uh, Windows v VM images uh, tooling was not kind of very open and supported. So the way you can allocate IP addresses for Windows VM in OpenStack environment it was a lot easier to do it with DHCP. Just program the DHCP server with MAC IP binding, and it does DHCP discover and gets the IP, right? Same, same thing, but now why we've gone to a Linux-only cloud to a real cloud, have, have uh, being able to provision Windows. And then, this was called the VLAN mode. Uh, that was, it is one of the kind of the preeminent mode for kind of more larger scale, more complex workloads. It's not a single kind of SaaS app, but you know, enterprise environment, a real cloud, mix and matching tenants. That's what most people adopted. Which meant uh, you can have all of these multiple networks here. Let's see. Anyways, you can have all of these multiple networks. You dedicate a, a VLAN on a per tenant basis. You start, you know, you, you, you set up a, in the config file the start number of all the VLAN ranges you're allocating to the cloud. You know, everyone creates a network. They get their own isolated environment. That's a VLAN for them. Great. You know, they're not, these tenants or applications have the isolated space, very, a lot more secure. You know, it still, still had this NOAA network uh, centralized a virtual appliance problem. We got around it. Uh, I'll talk about that. But that, that was a story from a customer use cases. That was pretty powerful, except once the OpenStack cloud started becoming bigger and bigger and becoming successful. You know, the two problems which popped up. Uh, I don't know if you know about VLANs. For those VLANs, be ex and if you know a cloud environment where VMs can be anywhere in your data center, and VLANs were made for departmental groups. So they were programmed on one VLAN for a certain set of switches, for another set of switches. But in a cloud environment, I can have a ten, uh, tenant which has VMs spanning anywhere, which means first, now to trunk all my VLANs on all my switches. So I have to touch every physical switch, and they, have, they can access any VLAN. Um, it stresses all of my network environment. Configuration is, becomes challenging. Troubleshooting becomes challenging. But you can get do it. Right? And then um, VLANs have a theoretical limit of 4096. So if I have more than that many apps or tenants, I'm going to be in trouble. But you're probably going to feel the pain way before that because most modern switches don't go up to that limit. You know, a lower end switches, you're going to probably start seeing issues within even 100 VLAN, 100, 150 VLANs. And that was, that was a big deal. And if, if a lot of these, uh, Cloud environments needed multi-tenancy, needed uh, their own dedicated kind of networking environments, and this is the only way to do it. And that's a, you know, 100, 150, even 4,000, not very cloud scale number. It makes it challenging. I mean, people will argue you can go back to the flat model, and here we have the security groups, we fire firewall things. 
becomes manageability burden, but it's like I can have a little more room, I can have more tenants. And that's what a lot of people are propagating. But challenge again here, no overlapping IP address space, no private networks. So applications have to be re-IP'd. So that model didn't work where you can have a lot more tenants. So the flat is great for a single application environment. And VLAN, obviously, like I said, was a, was a challenge. And so we were with the dilemma, how do you go fix it? Or how do we fix it that we don't have this dilemma again? And you know, and yeah, there was a challenge I was saying, no three-tier apps. If you want like you know, dedicated web DB app tier, all isolated, it was very hard to, hard to do. Like you can't dedicate that much, that many VLANs for a single application unless you know, that application has like, I don't know, a gold-plated app selling app <laughs> which can afford it. Um, so that didn't work. Scale, like I was saying, uh, the single L2 domain, that was a challenge. IP address management, not that bad, but it was dependent on a single database. You can externalize it, smaller problem. Security profiles had a scale issue because it was centralized. We solved that, we actually, after Neutron came about, Nova Network, when we solved it in Nova Network by removing and putting IP tables in the hypervisor. Not that much of an issue, but for most purposes, we still needed uh, to be on the same L2 domain. I'll talk about something called multi-host after this, uh, but uh, network services, they were limited. If I'm a tenant, I want to create my own environment, you know, logical uh, switches, routers, my own L3 topologies, there was no self-service element for L3. Or I need VIPs for load balancing, there was no self-service uh, element for load balancing as a service. Not only that, there was no framework to enable that for my tenants, that was a challenge. It was not that it wasn't there, I mean, Neutron doesn't have a lot of things either. <laughs> but it, there was no framework, how do we enable the service? If I have developers and this is really hurting me, as a cloud provider, didn't have a framework to work with and enable it. And that was becoming, challenging, cha becoming a big challenge as uh, OpenStack was gaining momentum, right? People wanted to solve a lot more use cases than the traditional, you know, put VMs on the network and get something up and going uh, kind of use cases. So, yeah, VPN as a service, firewall as a service, everything comes under the advanced services category. There was no mechanism for that. So that was, uh, that was a big problem. Um, and when, we, when I don't have these services, I think I'm going to use my existing uh, network services or my vendors who already have it. I'll use OpenStack for what it has. Challenge was there was no way to integrate anything else. Any other second, a secondary open source project, uh, if it provides, say, you know, there was the Viata routers or uh, there was uh, some kind of Quagga or something like some other open source project, how do I integrate it? There was no framework to really easily integrate these third party services. Open source or F5 load balancers or, you know, I have really highly available applications, I need this you know, vendor-specific uh, appliance, but I want OpenStack to be my cloud management framework. I couldn't do that, right? All of these challenges was where, where we were trying to solve with Neutron, right? Um, monitoring, troubleshooting uh, integrations were a lot more challenging because there was no single po resource point where I can get all network-related information. So you can integrate traditional network management and monitoring tools into it all of the challenges of being networking kind of embedded into the compute layer, right? So why was that? So this is, this is a little deeper dive into the VLAN mode of Nova networking. So everything I said, you know, I said it happens. We can see why it happens. So here we have, uh, you know, the compute nodes, all of these switches across all your data, data center in VLAN mode are probably trunked with all of the VLANs are accessible everywhere. So really at a network level, there's no isolation. All the traffic from all tenants is going on the same physical switch, stressing your physical infrastructure. That's one problem you see here. All the compute nodes are connected to the VLANs. There's IP tables in the compute node you see, so we saw the security profile kind of bottleneck a little bit, but we still had this thing called uh, uh, Nova networking node, which can be co which can be co-resident with the compute node if you want uh, on the left side. So, <coughs> sorry. So this Nova network node is where all the network services ran. So this is where we had natting, we did floating IPs, we did 
use IP tables to do that. There was DNS mask. We uh, plugged those in for IP address management. But again, um, this, it was only one or one DNS mask HA pair because it was really one network. So you didn't have that many address spaces. But that could get overloaded sometimes because once this became pretty big, and that was about it. And you can run this in kind of active standby mode. You can use Corosync or uh, you know or DRDB to do re replicate both of those, and that's it. It realized it was, since it was built by uh, people in, from the compute heritage, the semantics of a lot of semantics around HA and deployment were at the application level. So HA was was an issue, in that it was application level HA, which is great if it's with an API server. Not so great if it's like a fault tolerant network service. In a network HA, doesn't mean that you can take uh, outage, right? You will essentially you will fail over to get outage. So there are a lot of these challenges, and this was a choke point, right? All your cloud going through that network node, very challenging. Uh, <clears throat> we did create something called multi-host, which take, took all of these services or majority of these services and put it on the compute on every compute node. So you know all the traffic doesn't have to drag to the network node. But we still have a challenge that all the L2 VLANs have to be trunked everywhere because you're placing the VMs anywhere. You want the flexibility to place the VMs anywhere in the data center if it's really a general purpose uh, cloud environment. So we, had, we could solve everything by the old model, but it was still kind of holding us back. Right? There was not a lot, and we couldn't integrate anything externally to solve it or solve a particular pain point. I didn't have a framework. We had to rewrite, refactor. And that, as part of the rewrite or refactor we thought we would do, we were like, might as well do it in a way that anybody can reuse it. A cloud provider can reuse it, and you can plug in something in, in it. And that's where Neutron comes along. You know, promises everything, even though it was a rebel alliance, and it really was the rebel alliance. Uh, when the Neutron project was founded, it was a lot of you know, users, there was rack space involved, a lot of large vendors. I was at Nicera back then, and there was uh, Cisco, there were some other startups, there was folks from Juniper. Like, you can consider the Rebel Alliance. And these people were, you, would, you can consider them as rebels within their organizations to be participating and to be able to create something where all of these kind of disparate elements can work together. And it was, I guess, it was just like actually a couple of days to finalize this layer of Neutron API. And the motivation is that applications are programming to this API and we have decoupled it from anything underlying. So no matter what we do underneath for networking, how we evolve it, or a cloud service provider changes it, the application remains unchanged. You know, it's a core tenant of virtualization, you decouple first, and it makes you know, innovation faster. Because you can do anything internal, you're not impacting the whole stack. You can pool all your resources. Because of this, all your networking environments can have a single shared capacity. Um, we can do use overlay networking, like software-defined networking, because all of them is a single, there's a single point of definition for them, and the net network capacity is pooled. You don't have to trunk every VLAN everywhere. We can overlay uh, capacity on top of it. And it gives you choice, choice from uh, <clears throat> deployment topologies I'll talk about, kind of self-service, uh, L2 network, cell service, L3 elements, uh, firewall as a service, very, uh, you know, load balancing as a service. F5 just recently did a demo of how they are very seamlessly integrated into Neutron, LBAS. So the tenants can self-serve uh, self within the kind of uh, guardrails the provider, uh, you know, kind of specifies, and self-service as much as they can all of the networking services. That was from the back end. And then on the front, so front oh, that was from the front end. On the back end, you can use you know, the open vSwitch plugin, which uh, we, we had de developed, uh, and then you can use your physical networking, you can use some kind of proprietary vendor uh, solution, or you can swap out with something else which we don't know is gonna come in the future, which, which was very hard when, when Nova Network was hitting its limit to do. So we provide a framework which provides choice on the, on the provider side and choice on the tenant side. So choice and aligning of different models together was a big deal, right? So why did they use? How did it provide all of those? So it provided the rich topologies I was talking about, the three-tier AppDB uh, web topologies where these networks, a lot of them, a uh, lot of providers could do it because they integrated network virtualization solution, which means not a single, not a dedicated L2 
a VLAN on, on a per private uh, network in, in this space in the logical topology. Because you have some of these technologies, we integrate a neutron, decouple the physical network from the virtual network element. You can scale a lot better. You can have tens of thousands. Rackspace has a product, right, called Cloud Networks. Uh, pretty high scale. The, the way they could do it, with, instead of using plain VLANs, is using some of these leading edge technologies for network virtualization, which enable to create a lot of them, a lot of these networks. Where PayPal was talking about using Neutron. They had scale challenges, but they could, they could accomplish their goal. And you know, some of these customers are running super high scale as well. And security, security profiles, we redid it. In the, we still use IP tables since we had fixed Nova Network to use the, at the VNIC level or the VIF level the filtering. That is a good model, right? The filtering is distributed. We adopted it. We embraced where, where we could, leverage what was there, and only made changes where we had to, right? The network backend was not very pluggable. We had to change that. That's where it became the Neutron server, where there's a plug-in model. There's a plug-in API internally, which is independent of the Neutron API. LBAS is a service. Quite a few vendors now offering the LBAS API. It's not core. But the tenant-facing API is hardened. People can start using it. Plugins are evolved. There are a few of them. You know, F5 is a big one who demoed their plugin. And there is the HA proxy open source kind of implementation plugin. But from your tenant perspective, they're using this hardened LBAS API. And you can swap out which backend uh, you know, plugin you want based on the application. All of those high-level network services were not possible before. No kind of easy framework to integrate into them without kind of refactoring all of the code. Now, I mean, there's a single point. There's a free plugin, pluggable framework. You don't like something, we can integrate into it. Uh, doesn't scale, sure. We have taken the first step. Uh, some use cases are probably newer than the more honed use cases. We'll have to work together as a community to kind of you know, scale it up. But it just increased the possibilities for an OpenStack cloud from kind of you know, three to pretty much like it's like a, it's N. I, I'm, I call it N because there are so many combinations. It's a probably figure, you know, exponential combinatorial matrix of everything you can do. But that also means being the responsibility as a cloud provider. You, if you're running a particular combination, you have to validate it and test it. And that comes, comes with choice. You, know, you have the choice, but you have to put it together that, that it works for you and it's, it's validated. Now, the Neutron team validates all of this to some of the common topologies that everybody uses in the CI environment, but not every possible combination could be validated. That was a challenge that's come along. We've got to figure out how we solve it through maybe a CI, common CI infrastructure where vendors can put gear as well, which is integration testing. Let's see how we're doing on time. Cool. So, VLAN limitations were removed. I said the default open vSwitch plugin, as of some of the more newer network virtualization SDN plugins in Neutron, allow you to use overlay tunnels. The default one uses GRE tunnels. So you don't have to trunk every uh, switch with all the VLAN numbers. This can be just one. It, it need not be an L2 network even. It's just a plain L3 connectivity, L3 fabric. Uh, all these virtual networks you see on the top right side are essentially created using overlaid tunnels. So there's an agent on every hypervisor, creates a tunnel to another uh, hypervisor, and it creates this, essentially the, implements the logical topology on the top right side. So you have, the stress from your network is kind of uplifted. You don't have all the broadcast going on the physical fabric. So you have 1,000, uh, let me give you an example. So you have 1,000 tenants, and everyone has 10 VMs, right? 10,000 VMs. So before, you know, the use, you, you would have about 10,000 VMs came up, 10,000 broadcasts went to the net physical network. Now, you know, if you're, depending how you're, which technology you're using, that 10,000 broadcasts can translate into a single one because it's, it's going, going in, in the tunnel and in tunnel is set up. So, and if your tunneling uh, engine is intel, a lot more intelligent, it can even figure out where the destination is and unicast it so there's no broadcast on the physical fabric. It's just uh, initial setup infrastructure set up so it can be translated into just a single broadcast. It, uh, it takes out a lot of load from your physical network, gives you a lot more life out of your physical infrastructure investments. And honestly, right, this infrastructures were not made for the cloud era. They were not designed for it. So since we created this problem, we say it's only kind of 
responsible to, <laughs> to get a solution to the problem. So waiting for, for hardware life cycles, which are a lot longer to help solve this problem. And that, that was only possible with Neutron. There's no way you could do that with Nova Network. There's no framework to integrate basic switching and routing into a different switching and routing model besides VLANs, which were baked in to in, into all the way into the Nova compute hypervisors. Like there's logic assuming VLANs in the compute code. They're so baked in. Like talk about, you know, kind of fully locked in. Um, so this talks about, you know, the, the broadcast, it need not be on the physical fabric. It goes from point to point because of tunneling if you're using the network virtualization provider. And hypervisor to hypervisor, the GRE tunnel can be created on demand when a VM spins up on the second uh, end host. So the second part was, like I was saying, choice. Uh, what, what does it support? On the top, we saw it supports all these tenant-facing APIs, networking as a service, logical layer three services uh, on demand, you know, load balancing, VPN, firewall, and what have you. you can, it's a framework. You can even put anything you want. A lot of these APIs go usually to be experimental mode, so the community can use it. And once we see there is enough adoption, it actually becomes core and a supported platform. So a lot of things you see, like VPN as a service, even LBAS, they have not become full core because there's not enough people actually adopted it. There's not a big, good ecosystem. But it is actually it is there as a playground. It's there, the plugin framework's there. People can put code up there. You can develop your own plugin for each of these services as this cloud service provider and you can plug it in. But not only that, we enable choice at the bottom, which you couldn't do before. You can use the open source default plugin. You can use open vSwitch and GRE tunneling for switching and routing with the L3 agents. You can use uh, HA proxy for LBAS, right? Or you can use a vendor plugin for a certain uh, thing, which you know maybe a certain scale, it doesn't work. Or certain environments, or certain application. You can use F5s for load balancing. You can use NSX for you know, switching and routing, software-defined technology, or what, anything that comes up in the future you could use in this environment. That was not possible. So I'll go over a little bit on the default OVS plugin architecture. Right, We went over a little deeper into the NOVA network architecture. With, with the open vSwitch plugin that is there, by default, and then in uh, Neutron, that's the default open source plugin that we ship it with, we test the CI environment with. You have compute nodes. Now, Nova Network has been replaced with this Neutron Network node. Uh, key difference is we use something called network namespaces now, which is an isolation, which is a containerization or a Linux kernel C group level isolation, very lightweight isolation mechanism. So we can have all of these networks we saw uh, you know, with their own DNS mass. It's not a single network, it's a lot of them. But we can create them on demand, it's software, it's just a software container. So you can pack in about 500,000 on this single network node of these instances. Obviously you have to manage it, and you have to figure out a way, good way to manage it if you're packing so many of them. You can even spray it out, uh, you know, you can have multiple of these network nodes where you can put these L3 agents and OBS uh, DHCP agents. Obviously, if you're running at scale, you'd probably want to make sure you have the expertise in-house to troubleshoot it. It's not the deployment, it becomes easy. The configuration, once you get it right, it, it keeps on working. But you need to have the expertise to troubleshoot it, or you have to have somebody who's working with who, can, who has the knowledge. Because you've increased the choice, but you've increased the complexity of things you can do. I mean, the value to customer is great, but at the same time, manageability it needs a little more minimal understanding. It's, 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 little, it's not a simple model, so you need to know what's going on so you can troubleshoot it. But once you know about it, it since it's been you know, two releases when we recommended that Neutron can be used in real kind of test app production environments, there's not enough knowledge out there. So you know, make sure that you have to kind of understand it, put it in a lab environment, uh, work through your topologies and see how it actually works so you can actually fix it when you have, a tri when you have an issue. So you can see here the core things we did is take, took all of the services that were there in Nova Network, made it essentially multi-tenant, like we can have a lot of them. And you can scale out these network nodes, so you can really scale to a larger number. So, but you know, you have to look at it from the vantage point of Nova Network. You go from one to two, that's 100% scale, scale up. So you can go to 500. Now people are gonna say that uh, it is not as easy to scale to like uh, 
thousand. I have like five of those nodes. I'm doing straight synchronization. You have increased your scale from one to thousand. That's thousand percent. Obviously, your management overhead is going to be a little more than what it was with the older model. So you need to know how, how you're going to maintain and make sure this cluster is highly available. You're going to use some other technology to wrap it around, uh, or is Corosync good, good enough, or how you're going to design it such that the, the failure domains are kind of isolated. It needs some thought if you're doing a super large scale environment. But compared to Nova network from one to 500, it's a lot more simple. It, you, know, you had the same architecture, now you can get 500,000 of them with the same kind of fault characteristics, but with more flexibility. Right? But if you're scaling more, you're probably going to look at commercial solutions. You're going to look at somebody to help you support that. Because you don't want to be on the hook off for that. Right? So the last part of the topic was uh, people keep ask us a lot. This has been coming up in the press that uh, is Neutron ready for production? Right? You're like, oh, that's great. You guys solved a lot of things. And is it ready for production? And I thought I'm going to be probably pretty biased having pitched Neutron right, and uh, creating it. And we, even though we work with a lot of customers, I've worked with all of the early adopter, adopters. Um, how do I actually convey, or how do I, how do I even understand if it's ready for production before I can tell an audience? So thank, thankfully for me, the user survey came out uh, yesterday, so I had some fresh data to look at. So I, I, I took a look at that, and I saw, you know, this is the uh, slide from dev QA environments, the survey of about, I don't know, seven, 700 or so of OpenStack deployments worldwide that the foundation puts together. If you will see over here, you know, which services are folks using? There is Nova on top. And Neutron over here in the middle, there were 169 Neutron deployments, 204 Nova deployments. So I assumed the delta between 204 and 169 uh, is 35. So if people who are using Nova but not using Neutron are probably using Nova Network because you need networking in a cloud environment. So that, that's a pretty good number, which is a telltale sign that it is not all that bad. It's, it's got a decent uptake. That's 169 uh, Neutron deployments uh, compared to about 35 remaining Nova Network deployments. And I don't see some people going away from Nova Network for a while because upgrading is just challenging in OpenStack yet. There's no in-place upgrade. So some of these are you know, early adopters, probably going to be, they'll have to stand up a parallel cloud and do a migrate. And the, the, those Nova Network numbers are gonna keep on showing up. But if it's, that's a pretty big five is to one, I roughly, uh, difference. So that was a good sign to me that I think Neutron, you know, it's, you, you can probably, I can probably recommend users and customers to take Neutron to the next level and try it out. Um, next. Then I looked at this survey around what backends do folks would run on Neutron. People might say, oh, Neutron's ready. But you have, to, you have to only use a vendor proprietary backend, and that's the only way it's integrated. So this was on the networking technologies people use. So you, and that was also a surprise. I didn't, I, I had, so look, I just found out this data yesterday. So I didn't know, I was looking at it. It says Open vSwitch is the leading networking backend. And that's what is the only backend that uses GRE tunneling and the mesh of, uh, of networking in the back uh, behind Neutron to implement logical networking. That's also a good sign that uh, most of these folks are actually using the op Open vSwitch plugin. Sure, I mean, there are use cases, like I said, where you'll need a vendor proprietary plugin. And a lot of folks are using Nicira and Cisco for that, or the Linux bridge for the legacy models of networking. So, okay. oh, this, I skipped this. This was the uh, data on uh, production deployment. So the way the foundation tracks the deployments is uh, POC, Dev QA environments, early workloads, and production workloads. So POC, I just skipped it because it's not very relevant. People POC have all kinds of things. I looked at it, people have put a decent amount of Dev QA workloads, five is to one on Neutron versus Nova Network. Looked at production, people are more conservative, it takes longer to go into production, right? Um, there is about 135 Neutron deployments compared to 51. Nova Network is still pretty ingrained because these people probably started an OpenStack journey quite a while ago. 
But that's not pretty bad. That's 2.5 neutron deployments per uh, Nova network deployments. So that was also a positive sign to me, is that, yes, Nova network is still here. People who started early on in the journey are still using it. But Neutron, starting from POC, where there's a higher uptake, to DevQA, there's even higher uptake. Uh, or DevQA, there's a little lower uptake. And then to production, where there's a little lower. But it's, the growth rate compared to Nova Network is pretty high. So based on this data, I think you know, in, even the folks were saying that Neutron might have issues. But the numbers I look at from users tell me a different story. So I would think that there are probably issues in any software. You know, there are bugs in software. We, ha we have an open framework and a community to help us drive together. But this is good enough to get start deploying mo more complex workloads and topologies than what is possible before. So with that, I wanted to summarize why would you want to use Nova Network versus Neutron. Told about choice. Uh, the federation droid model, you know, you can have anything you want up till it's my way. And the Neutron gives you infinite choice. Actually, sometimes I get scared it's too infinite. <laughs> and uh, so you have to lock it down, actually, with Neutron. You have to validate the whole choice matrix. Dev test deployment, we saw Nova Network still have some footprint. Neutron has five is to one about kind of lead for dev test workloads. Production workloads. Nova Network is actually better. It's more stable. It's been there for a while in the, in the code base. So it's 2.5 is to 1 kind of uh, mix for that. And use cases supported. Three use cases versus here pretty much self-service, networking as service, L2 to L7, and a framework where you can create a networking service. Maybe you'll create your own CDN as a service. Integrated into this for a framework, you add your value add as a cloud service provider to your OpenStack deployment, right? A lot more uh, use cases and services supported. So with that, you know, I, I, guess, I guess I would like to call out to the rest of the people who are holding back with Nova Network, you know, come join the Rebel Alliance, right? Let's make this better. And uh, I'm not, I can take some questions if anybody has any questions. And there's some resources here for people to look at. Go ahead. You want to come into the mic? So, Okay, I'll just repeat the question. Okay, uh, the, uh, there we go. Uh, the, the Linux bridge uh, open source driver is actually feature parity with uh, OVS, just so you know. It's feature parity with OVS? VX land and gray tunnels and everything, so. Uh, and, and creates uh, tunnels? Yep. Okay, cool. And you can use both with, uh, with, open, uh, with Neutron, right? You have the choice that we can, you can create a driver with Linux bridge only, and you can integrate it. I, yeah, I guess you can use both. Some yeah. Well, if you use OVS, it actually uses Linux Bridge underneath it. Because yeah, for the some IP functions. Table supports. And yeah. then it, and it uh, ties IP tables via Linux Bridge as well. Right, right. Or you can just use Linux Bridge and not use OVS, and things are a lot more simple. Uh, and you still get tunneling and everything. So. Uh, sure, you can, <laughs> you can use all you want. That's the power of Neutron, right? You have all the choice. See what works best for you. Sure. Yeah, I just want to add a comment that the Neutron team is trying to make it uh, a, make it in parity with the NOAA networking by Juno. So the NOAA networking, whatever is available, we should be able to do it in Neutron. Yes. So I mean, that's, that's definitely a priority for, for the team. Um, it has parity, but just uh, corner cases, which are holding some of these 35 users you saw back, then that's a big priority that will probably happen by Juno. So if we move, yes. remove all the corner yeah. cases. Remove all the cases and then... Yeah. We'll be deprecating the Nova networking. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Hi. So you showed the uh, for Nova network versus Neutron for uh, production and QA kind of deployments, and you showed the distribution of plugins for the QA deployer. Unless did I miss the? Was there a slide? Oh, I, I didn't. I didn't. It's but it is at the what? user survey, OpenStack user survey. It shows a distribution of plugin oh. for the QA deployment. I just okay. didn't pick it up. I mean for the production deployment. Uh, for the production deployments, I did see the distribution of plugins on the proprietary. Majority of it is Open vSwitch, which is a default open source plugin. And in the other plugin category, there is uh, Cisco and Nicira, which is the NSX plugin. Those are the top two. Okay. 
I think uh, we are, I'm saying we're running out of uh, time. But I will take uh, one more question. Yeah. Is that um, to be implied that the uh, neutron doesn't currently support, support the multi uh, host configuration? So, neutron actually has the network nodes can scale out. You can, you can, and within the single host, you can have namespaces. So you can scale out within the single host. So imagine we can have 500 Nova network nodes in the, in the single host because of namespace isolation. And then we can scale out by adding new neutron network nodes. And within each one of them, we can have 500 of them. Could, could they be co-resident with the compute nodes, or that, is that not recommended? Uh, that's not recommended because then you, know, you, you want your traffic to, which is leaving the north-south data center to be centralized. Otherwise, you'll have to drag your WAN connectivity to your compute nodes, which from a networking model becomes complex. Yeah. Great. I think I'm saying I'm running out of time. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And we'll hope to see you as new users.